we thought it best within the organization um, to move back, to acquire some picks, because as we target this thing, we think the true depth of this, of this draft lies in between the second, the third, and the fourth round itself. Uh, there were some options that we had um, at times to go up. We had a lot of phone calls to go back, and we felt at the end of the day when we measured everything, we thought this was strategically probably the best move for us moving forward. With that, I'll take your questions. When did you decide actually to trade down? Was it somewhere midway through the first round? Well, I, I mean, as you go along, you're, you're kind of analyzing as the board unfolds. Um, and when you're on the clock, you know, we, you, you had said you had, to, you had actually – communicated with other teams that if you're willing to come up, come talk to us. And right around pick 26 or 27, teams began to talk to us about doing that. Um, and then, you know, after it was all said and done, um, we, we decided to go with the picks. And, you know, I know everybody's a little frustrated because you don't get a first-round pick, but I think the draft is a three-day process. And, you know, let's go for day two and day three here. John, how much did not having a third round pick, how much of a factor was that in, in making this move? Not at all. So I you, think. You would have done it if had you had the three anyway? Absolutely. When you started the day, did you feel like this was the likeliest outcome from the strategy you guys had kind of laid out pre draft? I had had three or four scenarios that I had kind of worked on um, during the course of the, you know, the week leading into this. And then when I was um, taking my walk, I, actually, you know what I did today? So I took the Lamar Hunt senior walk all the way around both complexes for about 45 minutes just to kind of get the blood flowing a little bit. And, you know, it gave me a time to think about certain things that I wanted to do. Um, and trading down was a possibility, a real possibility, if X, you know, A, B, or C were, were not there. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm very satisfied with where we are with this. Who well, are A, B, and C? Yeah. Oh, no. How much I knew you would ask that. How much influence was there by the names that went off the board? Did somebody go off that you kind of had your eye on and said, well, okay. I mean, you know, there's some good players. There's some good players still there left right now. And who's to say I won't take some of that stuff and move up right now as we speak? Um, that's the subtlety of it. I apologize. Excuse me. But there was no particular player that's gone that you said, okay, we can. No, there was about two players that I really – kind of focused in on and it didn't work so it's let's let's go and let's let's move this thing forward you said uh, there's frustration when you don't have a first round pick are you talking about the fans that are here are you talking yeah about i'm talking to fans. you know the fans that come going. here and yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean from a strategic standpoint you want to you know do what's best for the organization i think doing this right here going back we're still going to get really good players here you guys i mean that's the beauty of this whole thing is there are, there are, you know, we're, here we are. We're going to have two picks in the second round, and they're going to be really good players to be had. How much of a difference do you feel like the – go ahead, TJ. How much of a difference do you feel like the caliber of players you'll be able to get in the third round would, could differ from what you guys maybe are going to be able to get in the fourth round? Actually, if you really do your assessment in the third round, if you look mid, midway through the, the third round and takes you all the way down to – three quarters of the fourth round, if you historically study those uh, particular picks over the life of that pick, meaning the career of that player, they usually pan out about the same. And that's a wide variety, but those are the pockets that they fall into. And what I like is on that fourth pick, I believe it's 105 or 10, 105, uh, with that 105th pick, that's a really good position to be in because, again – in round four, that's to me, that's a that's a sweet spot in the fourth round. You touched on that, but having three of the top 105 now, as opposed to I think it was two of the top 125 before, what difference does that make as you're going through the, the difference? Draft? Is your mathematics are better than mine? I didn't really understand that. You, know, you said that was obviously the case. Yes, <laughs> but now that you know that, what, what does that do for you going through a draft? Well, it gives, you, it gives you a shot at, like, real players. I mean, that, that's kind of what it does. It, it gives you now options and shots at real players. And that's, you know, again, you target the draft. You think it's into the second, third, and fourth round. So now you have accumulated more picks now. So let's go work it now. You couldn't get a three for this move. 
I think I got a pretty good deal, and I'm happy with that deal. Hey, John, to, to make the deal, I, I'm curious. You mentioned a few days ago that you stacked this board 1 through 10 and 11 through 30. How confident are you that you can get an 11 through 30 guy at 37? Time will tell. Time will tell. Would you have made the move if there wasn't at least a reasonable chance? Yeah, you know, I mean, you can look at that. I thought, again, you know, certain players weren't here. Sometimes, you know, personnel guys, as they call it, they say blow the hatch and move down a couple spots. I mean, we moved a, a couple spots down. We accumulated some picks. And I think that's, again, that's best moving forward. I would love to stand there and have a pick and talk about it, but we're going to talk about the picks. John, you mentioned there were a couple of players that you had your eye on. Obviously, with Denver jumping in front of you, how much of a role did that play in deciding to make this trade? That, not at all. In your, uh, in your study, uh, which I'm sure you have, over yes, the sir. years of uh, trade backs. Yes, sir. Generally, how do they work out? Is it the same as Well, the ones I've been associated with, um, you know, it's the first time we've traded back here. The last time... The, the the old club I was with, we traded back twice. We got two pretty good players. So, How do you resent? Remember? Jordy, uh, it was Jordy, it was Jordy and Randall Cobb. So, oh, I'm sorry, that was the last time you were involved with a team that traded out of the first round? No, traded. Right? I mean, the last time I can remember, we went from one and traded down to two. I can, the ones I remember are Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb. So, there's good players to be had there. A couple more. Um, you're going to be playing against Lynch now? Eventually, if not next year, your thoughts on that? He's a rookie. He won't always be a rookie, though. No, he won't be. No, he's you know he's a fine football player. Uh, you got to line up and play against somebody, and you know they chose to to come up and do their thing, and you know he's a big, strong arm guy. Is there anything surprised you about how the first round played out? Yeah, that Miles Jack's still on the board. And um, he's a good football player. And I'm sure he'll go early uh, tomorrow. And, you know, there's more, there's more probably things lingering than people realize. And it's, it's not for his play on the field because he's a wonderful player on the field. Let's make no mistake. What are your guys you that? Yeah, since you mentioned that, why did you guys just set a trade down to take him? Well, as we sat there, and I'm not going to talk about players' medicals, but what I will say is, you know, again, by moving down, we I think we strategically did the best we possibly could do uh, moving forward. Um, you know, sometimes players are limited by by certain things, and you just uh, preclude you from making that move. Do you expect him to be gone by the time you guys pick at 37? the likelihood that he'll be there when you guys take him off. You know what, I don't know that because what I want to do tomorrow is I want to sit back and, and get with the, the personnel guys. I want to talk through some things. I want to be able to sit down with the medical staff and thoroughly go through all the different process and you know, I'll be able to assess that a lot better tomorrow.